Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Would you lift your hands and lift your voice to the Lord right now? The Holy Ghost is here in this house. Come on, let's praise him. Let's worship him together. We love you, Jesus. Come on, that's it. Let's open our hearts. Let's begin to press in the Holy Ghost. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We magnify you. We lift you up. Our God is mighty. Our God is awesome. Our God is powerful. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, God wants to do incredible things in this service tonight. We love you. We worship you. We've come expecting a move of your spirit. We've come expecting the impossible to be made possible here in this house tonight. We lift you up. We give you high praise. Oh, hallelujah. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Would you lift your voice to him in praise? We love you. We thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So thankful to be in the house of the Lord. So thankful for what God is doing in this place. Amen. I feel much faith here in this house tonight. Amen. I believe that God is about to do incredible things in this service. I believe this would be a good night for somebody to be healed. Would that be all right with you if God just filled somebody with the Holy Ghost? Why not tonight? I'm telling you, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. God desires to give us miracle signs and wonders. We're not waiting until next week or six months from now. We're going to get this party started tonight. Amen. God wants to shake this house with his power. Is there anybody hungry? Is there anybody that's ready anticipating what God's about to do? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. If you'll just bear with me in the reading for a little bit. Amen. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. As you're turning there, I want to say how much I appreciate and love and respect your pastor and his family. Amen. They are wonderful people. I love to be with them. Amen. They have an, an incredible burden and love for this church, for the kingdom of God, for souls. You know, it's very evident when you're around them. Appreciate them so much. Amen. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son." And shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. The angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. This is the sixth month with with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Praise God. I'm going to preach to you from this subject tonight for the next few moments, expectant with the miraculous. Expectant with the miraculous. Would you lift your hands and lift your voice one more time? Let's pray and ask the Lord to have his way in this service tonight. Would you do that with me right now? Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate your help. We worship you, Jesus. We've come hungry. 
Come on, if you're expecting God to do something in your life and your family tonight, would you tell him about it right now? God, I've got a need. I've come expecting you to move, to heal, to deliver, to set the captive free. We've come expecting you to pour out your spirit upon all flesh in this service. God, we loose your spirit. We loose the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost in this service tonight. We bind every spirit that would hinder. Let your anointing destroy the yoke of bondage in this service. We praise you for what you will do and what you will accomplish. Come on. Can we praise God for what we're believing him to do right now? We love you. We lift you up. We thank you, Jesus. We magnify you. Oh, hallelujah. That's it. Lift your faith to him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. What an incredible but unusual story. Amen. An angel appears to a single young lady who is most likely around 14 to 15 years of age. She's told that she's going to have a child. Amen. She is engaged or uh, to be married and soon to be wed. And this news is so startling. It's so out of the blue. She's never had an encounter with an angel before. He said, your child that you're going to have is going to be great. You're going to call him Jesus. She says, I have no husband. I'm unmarried. The angel says unto her, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you and you will conceive a child. And I'm certain for most of us, had had most women been in that situation, the thoughts that would have went through your mind, and no doubt perhaps thoughts that went through her mind, what will people say when I tell them this kind of news? What will people's opinions be? Because people are going to talk, and people are naturally going to assume the worst about this. But whatever Mary thought and whatever Mary felt, the words that came out of her mouth showed great faith in God. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. She had no guarantee that this thing was going to happen. She did not know how she would explain this to Joseph. How would he take the news? When she shared the news with him, he took it badly. He did not know what to think. He did not know what had happened. Either she's lost her mind or she's been unthankful. Something is not right. The Bible said he was going to put her away privately. He was just going to put an end to this. No doubt when if people were to find out, people were going to start talking. According to the law, a fornicator could be stoned in that day and, and that's the direction people's minds were going to go. And It was a difficult moment. Amen to really believe and have any kind of faith and he was just going to walk away from this completely but the angel appeared unto him as well and said the child that is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost don't be afraid to take her as your wife God is about to perform a great miracle Amen. neither of them had any proof that this thing was about to happen they had no evidence that anything was going to take place it was not until Mary amen began to feel the change come over her body that she knew amen that God was working and that the miraculous was at work amen we understand when you become expectant with a child without the help of modern medicine uh, and science there really is no way of knowing for a little bit of time but then the changes begin to come amen you begin to feel differently you begin to show the signs of pregnancy amen you have not given birth but everything is pouring into the direction that there is a child on the way amen I feel like God wants to perform some miracles here in this service tonight Amen. Here's something I know about miracles. Sometimes when God performs a miracle, amen, they are instantaneous. As soon as we lay hands on the sick, they instantly recover. As soon as we speak the name of Jesus, instantly that situation is reversed. And I wish to God every time we prayed for a miracle that it unfolded in that manner. In fact, I'm certain everybody here, amen, wished that when you prayed, amen, that the lightning would flash and God will move instantly and take care of your
your situation. But it's in the moments that God chooses not to answer immediately. When God chooses to take his time. When God picks his own timing that's so far different from yours. Amen. I'm telling you, it tests our faith. It stretches our faith. It's in the passage of time that so many abandon an idea of ever having an answered prayer. It's in the passage of time where people throw in the towel and say it's no use. Why should I wait any longer? If God wanted to give me a miracle, if God wanted to save my family, if God wanted to answer my prayer, why would I have to wait as long as I've had to wait? Amen. Why hasn't it happened already? I'm preaching to somebody right now in the Holy Ghost. Even God wants to help somebody. I'm preaching to people that have been praying a long time. That have been believing for a long time. That have lived with stress and fear and anxiety hoping. Amen. One day God's going to answer and God's going to move. I'm telling you God is here to move tonight. Amen. God is here to answer tonight. Come on. God can heal the sick. God can raise the dead. It matters not the sickness. It it matters not the disease. It doesn't matter the difficulty of the situation. God is able to answer. God has his own timing and it doesn't look like yours. God operates on his own time, not on yours. He said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts, not your thoughts. My ways are above your ways. My thoughts above your thoughts. I've got my own timing. Why do we get so impatient with God? Why do we get so wore out waiting on God as if somehow we're going to get the miracle somewhere else? As if somehow perhaps we could fix the situation ourselves. Friend, if you could heal yourself, then go ahead and do it. Otherwise, you might as well try waiting on God. Let Jesus do this thing. Last time I checked, I can't heal myself. I can't save myself. I can't undo the problems in my life. But I serve a God that can do the impossible. I serve a God that can do anything but fail. Come on, I serve a God that can reach into the darkest place in your world and allow his light to begin to shine. If it takes me a week, if it takes God a month, if it takes God a year, amen, whenever God decides to do it, I choose to believe him for the miraculous. Come on, some people have been waiting a long time. Amen, God wants to unveil a miracle for somebody in this house tonight where you don't have to wait another day. Who's going to get a miracle in this service tonight? Amen. Who's God going to have? Who's prayer? Come on. What need is God going to meet? What situation is God going to work in? Who's going to give God an opportunity to move? Hallelujah. See, what you don't understand is that there's things that have been in progress in the spirit for a long time and you're concerning your situation. I want you to hear me. A miracle always begins in the supernatural before it manifests itself in the physical. Hallelujah. Things always begin happening in the spirit world before they manifest themselves physically. Oh, hallelujah. Daniel began to pray that God would answer, that God would move. For 21 days, he went to the house of prayer. He opened his window to pray, and nothing happened. Amen. He didn't feel a thing. It was almost as if he was wasting the time. I've been praying. I've been faithful. I've been consistent. I've been putting my neck out for this thing, and not a thing has happened. 21 days have passed. 21 days of consistency. 21 days of faithfulness before God decided to answer. The angel Lord appeared and said that there is moment that you asked in your heart the answer was given but we've been delayed by the prince of Persia for 21 days honey it's not that God 
God hasn't answered. It's not that God hasn't healed. It's not that God is already on the move. His timing is different than yours. Amen. Wheels are already turning. Angels are already being dispatched. Come on. I'm telling you, God has an answer for somebody. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you call it quits. Don't you give up on a God that will not fail, that cannot fail, that has never failed. He can heal anything. He can answer anything. He can fix anything. When God takes his time, when God takes his time, it plays their minds, plays their emotions. When you pray and it doesn't happen, did God hear me? Does God want to answer? Does God want to move? Maybe it's not God's will. Maybe I should stop praying for this. Maybe God doesn't want to do it because if he wanted to do it, naturally it would have already happened. We need to stop trying to play God in 2018 and let God do what God's going to do. If we would stop giving up before God answers, we would see a lot more miracles in the apostolic movement. If we would stop quitting on God, amen, while God is in the middle of working things out for our good, amen, we would see a lot more answered prayers. We'd see a lot less unbelief and a whole lot more faith. I'm telling you, I'm sick to death of the spirit of unbelief robbing churches of revival and the miraculous and the gifts of the spirit God would wants to do it. God is willing to do it. Come on. Come on. It's time to let God be God. It's time to let God do what only God can do. It's time to allow God to move only in the way that he can. When you're expecting a child, you start thinking different. I've observed this very closely. Start thinking different. Start acting different. You start making plans. There's a child coming. You're getting ready. You're picking out colors. You're buying clothes. Our child had more clothes than I had before she ever got here. She still has a lot of clothes. And getting more by the day. But most women, if you live in a house, we live in a trailer, it's a little different. You start picking out colors for the room, picking out the bed, picking out curtains and this and that, getting everything ready. There's expectancy. There's a child coming. Something is about to happen. You, you start thinking. You start taking precautions. My wife tells me, I, I can't have, I can't eat this, and, and I can't do that. And, and all of a sudden, things I like to eat, we can't eat now because we got to be careful. And, and everything begins to change. You, you, you don't do things that you used to do, and you don't, you don't act in ways you used to act. I'm going to tell you, when you're expecting revival and you're expecting a miracle, you start thinking differently. And you start making preparations. You start showing the signs of expectancy. You you start talking differently. You don't go the same places you used to go. You don't act the same way that you used to act. You want everybody to know and you want God to know there's a miracle on the way. I don't want anything to stop it. I don't want anything to hinder it. Come on, I feel a miracle in this house for somebody. I feel an answer in this service for somebody to make preparations. Get ready for what God's about to do tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, some of you have been waiting a long time. This church has been praying for a great outpouring for a long time. Come on, 2018, it's your season. It's your time of increase. It's your time of growth. Come on, God's ready to gather in the harvest. God's ready to pour out his spirit in a manner that we've yet to see before. Is there anybody hungry for it? Is there anybody that can believe that? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ha 
hallelujah, we have created, and I may come back and preach on it at some point, we'll see. We have created so much unbelief in Pentecost that it's sickening. It's weakened our faith. Hallelujah. We have prayer for the sick. And I'm, I'm not really sure why we do that anymore. Because most of the time it's people lining up or needs being filled out. And it's in every church. I'm not knocking anybody for doing it. It started with the best of intentions. But it's become a thing where we just come up to get prayer. We put in a need. And most of the time, no one expects anything to happen. I want you to think about that. You write your name down. You come up for prayer. However you do it. How many people actually expect when I get prayed for, when I put this need in, something's about to change? Oh, hallelujah. Even I've seen so many people that says, what I'm supposed to do. We're Pentecostal. We're supposed to, we're supposed to get prayed for, but I call the pastor. Hallelujah. And so often I find that Jesus is the last resort. We've done everything but pray. And when we finally come to get prayer, amen, it's because we've already been taken, amen, the prescription. I'm not against any of that, okay? Don't, don't get me wrong, amen. But often Jesus is the last place that we choose to stop and we wonder why, amen, we're so limited on the miraculous. We wonder why our kids and our young people have seen so few miracles. I'm telling you, that's not the way that God intended for it to be. It's not because God has grown weaker. It's because we've abandoned our faith when the timing didn't work out the way that we wanted it to. Come on, it's all hallelujah. I bind every spirit of unbelief here in this service tonight. In the name of Jesus, I release faith in this house. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Expectancy says... When I get prayed for, something's going to happen. You don't need a preacher to pray for you. I'm going to mess some of you up real bad. You don't need the evangelist to pray for you. These signs shall follow them that believe. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Honey, if you've got the same spirit, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you can lay hand on somebody beside you. They can be healed of cancer. They can be healed of asthma. I don't care what it is. Come on, God can do it. What kind of God do you serve tonight? Come on, I believe. I believe. Is there anybody that's got expectancy tonight? Come on, I feel something happening right now in the spirit. I feel things beginning to shift right now. There's some dead things that are coming to life right now. Hallelujah. Can God heal? Can God answer? It's easy to believe for others. But when you're the one in the doctor's office and he's giving you the bad news, when you're the one hit with financial crisis, when you're the one dealing with family problems, it was easier to believe for everybody else. But when it's you in the crosshairs, when it's you that's about to suffer, when it's you facing the difficulty. My, I, I believe for a lot of people, and I had faith and I shouted and rejoiced, but when I had to deal with the difficulty, that changes everything. If God can do it for somebody else, God can do it for you. I, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. You know, we, we spend our time categorizing our needs to God. Because to us, a little financial trouble, a little cold, a little sickness, that, that's a small need. 
and then a real devastating sickness, a real serious family problem. That's a really big need. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, God looks at everything that you need exactly the same. It doesn't take God, it doesn't require more effort of God to heal cancer than it does a cold. Y'all hijacked my sermon the other night, but when the lame man was healed, he said, which is easier for me to do? Say your sins be forgiven or to heal his body? Just so you can see, I can do either one. It doesn't require any more power and it doesn't require any more faith out of you. Amen. The same faith it requires of you to be forgiven of sins, to be baptized in Jesus' name, that's the same kind of faith it requires you to receive a miracle. It doesn't take extra faith. Come on. You don't have to have incredible faith it doesn't take God any more power to forgive sins to cure disease to open blinded eyes it's all the same to God come on God isn't worked up God isn't afraid he's not broke out in a cold sweat because of how bad your need is God can do anything God can do the impossible come on God's not scared God's not intimidated God's not trying to figure out how am I going to fix this he had the answer before you had the problem oh hallelujah I feel the Holy Ghost in this house right now Jesus in your name I'm so far out of my notes we may come do part two of this another time God always makes provision for the need I know a lot of you don't believe that. But God wants to prove it to you. God always makes provision for a need before the need exists. Hallelujah. When God created the heavens and the earth, he did not put animals and fish on a big ball of dirt and then try to figure out how to sustain them and allow them to survive. He created the environment and he created everything that they would need to survive before he put them on the planet. When he put Adam on the earth, he put him into an environment where he could survive and have everything that he needed. There was provision before there was need. That's just in the beginning of the book. You ought to read the whole thing and see all the places where God provides before there's a need. God looked through time and knew the direction that we would go. And so he was the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. God made provision for your messed up, broke up, cracked up life before you ever breathed your first breath. Amen. God already had a plan. God already had a method to fix you, to fix your messed up life. God always makes provision before there's a need, there's a cure, before there's a disease, there's an answer, before our prayers ever prayed come on there is a solution before there's ever a problem yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My. <laughs> lift your hands right now and let's talk to the Lord <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sometimes it takes a little time for the miraculous to begin to show. Sometimes a little time has to pass before we begin to see the hand of God begin to work and begin to move. God said, Abraham, you're going to have children. You're going to have such a large family, you're not going to be able to count them. Like the sand of the shore, the stars in the heaven. And a whole lot of time passes, and not one blessed child. 
some of you, God's told you some things and you think you lost your mind because so much time has passed and so many things haven't been fulfilled. You've convinced yourself, you have talked yourself out of this miracle so many times. If God really could do that, if God really wanted to do that, he would not have allowed this situation to continually get worse. My family is spiraling so far out of control. God made me a promise years ago or months ago or weeks ago and it's yet to happen. I'm going to give you a family you can't even see the end of. There's going to be so many of them. Decades. And there's not one thing. Amen. It's as if God has forgotten. I wonder if I just got overzealous in prayer meeting. I wonder if I just got worked up and and I thought I felt something. But maybe I really didn't feel anything. Maybe it was too much pizza on Sunday night. I don't know what it is. And we talk ourselves out. Maybe that's not what God wanted to do. And maybe that's not what I thought was going to happen. Maybe I misunderstood what the preacher said. And before we know it, we're putting our miracle on the shelf. I thought that was going to happen, but I guess that's not for me. We're abandoning it. We're burying our dreams. We're abandoning the things that God has promised us. Honey, when God makes a promise, he will fulfill it. God is bound to his word. He will not speak anything into your life that he is not willing and able to fulfill. Sarah gets frustrated. We've waited all this time. This is ridiculous. Gives him Tamar. They have a son. Ishmael was not God's plan. We get frustrated with God. God, you've got to intervene now. You've got to move now. Jesus, if you'd been here, our brother would not have died. We wait, you wasted time. You had ample opportunity to move and to answer. And things are so far gone. We try to force the hand of God. We try to play God. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to some frustrated people. And God wants to answer a prayer for tonight. Years have gone by. There's no children. Baby's room is dust covered. And and it's just a a sorry reminder of the the promise that's never been fulfilled. Now Abraham, Sarah, the old how can God answer? We've waited a lifetime for this to ever happen. And finally, at the end, it says that God appeared and said, Hey, you remember that promise I made when you were a lot younger and things were a lot clearer? I'm here to fulfill it right now. But but this is a bad timing. We're old. I, I don't know. No, no, no. This is the timing that I have chosen. This is the moment. I'm going to tell you, you may think where you're at right now, the situation you're in, it's a bad timing. There's no way it could happen right now. How do you give God one chance and God can blow your mind? Even he's on his own timing, honey. He's got his own timing. I don't care if your family is cursing the church every time you walk in the door. I don't care how much they despise this church. I don't care how many doctors you've been to. I don't care how many years you've lived with the difficulty. When God decides to answer, honey, God can erase everything and start all over. God doesn't quit things. He doesn't give up on things in the middle. That's not what God is. God is a God of completion. He's the author and the finisher, the beginning, the ending, the first and the last. What he starts, he will finish. What he begun in you, he will finish. What he began in your family, he will finish. What he's begun in your body, he will finish. What God began in the situation you're dealing with, he's going to finish. What God started in Rialto, he's going to finish. And it's going to be a whole lot bigger at the end than it was at the beginning.
I feel expectancy in this house right now. I'm expecting God to answer. I'm expecting God to move. I'm expecting God to heal. I'm living with expectancy. I'm looking. I'm waiting. I'm believing that God is going to answer. I'm expecting God to answer someone here in this service tonight. Hallelujah. I'm still trying to pry a few more out of your comfort zone. I'm still trying to coax a few more. You've so abandoned the idea of God answering and God moving that you've completely checked out on me. You'd wish I'd shut up and end this service because you prayed and you put effort and nothing happened and now you choose to live your life in frustration. You choose to sit here frustrated, angry, and think that this kind of preaching is nonsense. Honey, you quit way too early. You quit way too soon. God wasn't hardly even started yet. I'm telling you, God can finish it tonight. God can finish it tonight. God can answer tonight. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. I've got a lot of notes. Let me just tell you about me. And what God can do. Is that all right? Me and my wife wanted a child. And there was no child. We prayed. We believed. We fasted. We didn't play around. We prayed in the Holy Ghost over and over and over. And every physical sign showed there was great problems. And it was impossible. Everyone that we talked to was never going to happen. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed. Nothing, nothing. I remember being in revival in Kansas. It was so cold outside of that building, praying in the sanctuary during the day. And the Holy Ghost literally knocked me on the floor and spoke to me a promise that God was going to give us a child. And I rejoiced and I thank God nothing happened. Nothing. Nothing changed. Years passed. Nothing happened. But, but God gave you a promise. Try having a promise that's unfulfilled. Try having a promise after years have passed. It's harder to see it. It's harder to believe it. It's easier to believe that you were just thinking something crazy, that you were just imagining something. It's easier to just say, no, I'm just going to set this aside and I'm just going to accept life as it is. Some of you are accepting disease. You're accepting mental issues. You're accepting problems. You're, you're accepting the fact that your family, I just, they're not going to be saved. This is just how I'm going to have to live life. I've just been handed a bad hand and, and this is just what I'm going to have to play. Because it's easier to do that than to continue to believe. I'm talking to somebody right now. You need to receive this in your spirit. We prayed. We believed. It became very painful, particularly for my wife. I told God, I I, I don't know what else we're going to do. I I believed. I prayed. And I made up my mind. We're going to live with expectancy. We're going to live with expectancy. I'm not coming back in this prayer room and groveling at God's feet, begging and pleading. And, and why? And why aren't you doing it, God? And please, and you said, and, and you didn't. And you know what I did? Every time I walked in the house of God, God, I thank you for the promise that you've given. I thank you for the miracle that's on its way. I thank you that you've already answered. I thank you it's going to come to pass in the name of Jesus. I don't care how bad the day, God, how difficult it looked. God, you made a promise, and I'm believing you to fulfill it. I praise you for it. I thank you for it. Would you believe that God answered the promise? Would you believe last year three different ladies in three churches, the doctor 
doctor said you'll never have a child. Amen. Last year alone, two of those already had babies right now. And the third, a child is on its way. I've watched God heal numerous diseases and sickness. In 2017, there is nothing impossible for God to do. If God's given you a promise, God is able to fulfill it. If God told you he would answer, God's going to answer. Come on, I feel faith right now in this house. I feel the miraculous in this service right now. You don't need a person to lay hands on you. Right now, somebody can be healed. Right now, God can begin to answer. Come on, I feel it in this service right now. I feel it moving. Music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, don't come half-heartedly. Don't come passively. If you're coming, let that be a declaration of expectancy. Let your movement right now show God, I am coming to receive a miracle. I am coming for an answer to prayer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands.